And now back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic and your host, Bobby Likas. And welcome back to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Terrific program today. Uh, I'm proud to be here to answer your car questions for 28 years, and I'm ready for more. But first, with us today on the Car Clinic Hotline is Jill McIlvain, eCare Manager, Optima Batteries, Inc. at Clarius Global. Jim, welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Glad to have you in the house. I appreciate you having me on. What a fancy job title that is. That's a, that's a long name, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, it's a corporate name, but the bottom line, e-care means a lot these days because when people want to learn about a product, they will go online and do research. Or, in the, in our case, they tune into Bobby Likas Car Clinic. I mean, you know, you got to know I say that. Uh, uh, honestly, I'd rather have them tune into your show because... You can, you can find just about anything on the Internet that, that'll agree with somebody's perspective. <laughs> well, I know that's a fact, but uh, I'm really excited to hear about a recent Optima Batteries promotion, and I've shared this with our Car Clinic listeners before, but I'm glad to have the man in the house today share with our Car Clinic listeners and viewers news about the, and folks, get this, Ride Shotgun Experience. Yeah, you know, we, we did this promotion a little bit earlier this year where, we offered basically free trips to the SEMA show in Las Vegas, which is the second largest trade show in Las Vegas behind the Consumer Electronics Show. It's the largest automotive aftermarket car show in the world. So we're offering a free trip to the SEMA show where we announce who the winners are. And then those winners go on one of six trips where they get to ride in the passenger seat with one of our brand ambassadors. And they're going to go on some pretty amazing ventures. Uh, they'll do the Rubicon Trail with uh, Larry McRae and his Jeep. They'll do... Uh, the King of the Hammers course with Lauren Healy and his old before. One person is going to go to Germany and ride around Nuremberg Ring with James Clay and his BMW and uh, several other opportunities. So it's it, it was a really cool promotion. We got some great entries, and, and one of them was actually one of your listeners. Well, I, that excites me because uh, it's nothing that I'd love more for. And, folks, you're listening to a very important message here from Jill McIlvain at Optimal Batteries. Uh, and this this information, the ride shotgun experience, I'll tell you, Jim, for me, uh, the Newberg ring would have to be my choice. And, folks, every year, Optima Battery searches for the ultimate streetcar. So, Jim, touch on this year's results, if you will. Well, we have seven qualifying events around the country uh, at different tracks. We start at Las Vegas Motor Speedway. We go to Road America, Nola Motorsports Park. We went to Daytona International Speedway this year, uh, Pikes Peak International Raceway. And uh, all these different tracks that we go to, these are all street cars. They all run at least 200 Treadwear street tires. They're all street legal. They're licensed, titled. Uh, so we run them on the street in the Lucas Oil Road Rally, but we also put them on the track and see how they do on the track. And then we take the top contenders. We invite them to the SEMA show where their cars are on display all week. And then we head out to Las Vegas Motor Speedway immediately after the SEMA show. And we have the ultimate street car invitational, and we crown a winner every year. Uh, so we've got some really exciting entries this year. Um, we have Corvettes and Camaros and Mustangs. Uh, then our electric car class, which is just straight electric. There's no hybrids in there. Uh, we have a Tesla Model 3 by, driven by a guy named John Lachlan out of the Midwest, and, and it's an exceptionally quick car. And I know people aren't thinking about Teslas and electric cars as performance cars yet. But when uh, people see this car compete against our field of ultimate street cars, they're going to be shocked because it's it's an amazingly fast car, very well driven. Well, no, no doubt the, the EV has that instant power and acceleration. Uh, and speaking of batteries and EV power, uh, let's let's shift gears and go into the AGM, which, folks, as you heard me mention, is uh, the absorbent glass mat batteries. Uh, Jim, are there any special requirements for charging an AGM versus a typical flooded battery? There really isn't, uh, and, and I can't speak for every AGM manufacturer, but in general for Optima batteries, uh, you just plug them into a regular battery charger, and they'll work just fine. Um, the one issue that people run into is if they have a battery charger that charges gel batteries, and the next gel battery I see in an automotive application will be the first. They're, just, they're in standalone power. You just don't see them in, in cars, but people confuse AGM with gel because of the G in AGM, and they're not the same technology. Um, so I would just avoid using gel settings, uh, but regular charger settings work just fine on AGM batteries. And, and really, it's, it's one of the best things you can do to maximize the performance and lifespan of your battery, whether it's an Optima or any others, 
to plug it in every once in a while and top it off with a charge, especially with these newer vehicles that use so much electricity when they're just sitting. Well, now you speak about charging batteries. Uh, share with our car clinic listeners and viewers how ambient temperatures affect a battery. Well, I'll tell you, it's, it's really surprising for a lot of folks to hear that heat is what really damages batteries, extreme heat. And I'm, I'm in Florida right now, but uh, folks who live in the desert southwest know what I'm talking about as well. That's where the batteries really get beat up. Um, but then when you get into the colder temperatures, and, and I used to live in Wisconsin, where we get into the 90s in the summertime and then you know, sub-zero in the winter, uh, those colder temperatures where the engine takes more cranking power to get it started, that's where the damage that happens in the summertime manifests itself because the batteries just can't handle that extra load, and, and that's where they start to fail. So uh -huh. it's, it's really the heat that does the damage, but... In a lot of instances, the cold that brings it out. And if, if you live in Las Vegas all the time, well, and, and you're never in the cold, eventually your batteries will die. And it doesn't take very long out in the desert for batteries to die because it's just it's a harsh environment for car batteries. Well, got it. We're talking with Jim McIlvain, eCare manager for Optimal Batteries uh, with Clarius Global. So, so Jim, how does the charge cycle differ from, uh, you know, in, in an Optima versus the standard flooded battery, as you just touched on? Well, Optima uses pure lead, um, where most typical batteries, I call them black box batteries because most of them look like they're in a black box. Uh, they use recycled lead. And Optima batteries also have cast straps that connect the cells, where typical black box batteries have uh, welds that connect the cells. And, and it's kind of a, a, a choking point for electric current because everything has to flow through that point of connection that connects the cells. So... Optimal batteries can accept uh, a charge at a much higher rate, and they can recharge faster because of those cast straps that connect the cells. And then they can deliver current for longer, uh, which can be a good thing or a bad thing. When our, our sponsored tournament anglers are out on the water and it's a really windy day or they have a lot of current to deal with uh, and they need a lot of extra juice from their batteries, it's not uncommon for them to come off the water uh, with their trolling motor batteries discharged down to 6 or 7 volts. Now, the flip side of that is if a guy has a Corvette, like a C6 or a C7, that uses a fair amount of electricity uh, because of OnStar and other things that stay on while the car is parked, if he lets that car sit for several weeks, that battery is going to become deeply discharged. And it doesn't matter if it's an Optima battery or anybody else's, but uh, the thing about Optima batteries, because they have such low internal resistance, they'll keep delivering current to whatever accessories are discharging that battery. And sometimes those batteries will get discharged down to two or three volts. So uh, the problem folks run into is it's harder to recover batteries that have been deeply discharged like that because so many chargers on the market won't deliver current to any battery that's been discharged below about 10 and a half volts. Well, definitely. I've had that same issue uh, right here in the Car Connect service shop. So uh, I, I guess a question that uh, I, I get asked quite often Let's just say I have an older car or a standard newer car that doesn't have an AGM battery. Can, can I replace a standard flooded battery, a car that comes with a standard flooded battery? Can I upgrade that to an AGM battery? You absolutely can. And, and the base of the technology, lead and acid, is, is the same. It's not like you're going from a, a lead-acid battery to a lithium product. Uh, but the AGM batteries, whether it's an Optima or any other, will probably perform better and last longer. They're more resilient in extreme applications, and including extremely hot applications, extremely cold applications, demanding applications with uh, more cranking that's required. And uh, they're very vibration resistant, where the flooded batteries with the electrolyte just sloshing around inside the battery, uh, they, they don't do as well in those extremely uh, vi harsh vibration uh, scenarios. And then uh, the batteries also don't corrode around the terminals like you, you see those those green snowballs uh, of terminal corrosion with a, a sealed AGM battery like an Optum battery. You just don't get that corrosion around the terminals. Well, of course, that's a common issue in the automotive service business, of which uh, we've been in for 48 years. Uh, let's switch gears. I have one last question, or a couple last questions, I guess. Uh, with regard to newer vehicles, uh, what makes a newer vehicle require a more powerful battery than, say, a 10-year-old or an older vehicle, whatever that age might be? Well, I, I can I can jump to a couple of great examples. Uh, I, I bought a 92 Chevy pickup truck brand new, uh, and I measured the parasitic drive from 
I'm not about that stuff, and, and I like to know what's going on. I think it was about 27 milliamp hours, so very low, maybe the preset on the stereo. So when you turn your radio on, your stations are always the same. So that that requires, and, and the clock stays on, so your clock doesn't reset every time you start your car. That, that requires a little bit of electricity, but not much. Um, but when you get into some of these newer cars, uh, a Tesla is a great example. They have a sentry mode that has cameras all around the car that are motion activated. So if somebody comes up to a, a Tesla, it's going to start recording people, like videotaping them. Uh, some cars, a lot of the GM vehicles have OnStar technology, and that's just like your cell phone. Um, that works all the time. And if and, and if your cell phone goes into a parking ramp where it has a hard time getting a signal, it's going to turn the wick up to try to get a signal. And that's going to use more battery on your cell phone. It does the same thing to your car. If you park in a garage or a parking ramp and OnStar has a hard time getting a signal, it's going to turn up power to try to get better reception. So uh, those accessories, car alarms and integrated anti-theft uh, systems that deter theft from, from uh, occurring in newer vehicles, all that stuff uses quite a bit of energy. So it's not uncommon, especially with the newer supercars, they come with battery tenders and maintainers that they encourage their owners to plug in and, and, and use regularly because they know those cars only get used maybe on a weekend here or there. Uh, but the fact of the matter is even a regular daily driven vehicle, if it takes a lot of short trips, there's a good chance that it's discharging the battery more than it's actually maintaining it when the vehicle is started and the alternator is running because short trips are just brutal on batteries. They, the, the cranking power that it takes to start the car and then you get somewhere, and then especially with these newer vehicles that have start-stop technology, they're moving to AGM batteries because they're more resilient in those applications. They have to start thousands of times more than a regular car that just starts up and runs until you shut it off because they're, stop, they're stopping and starting every stop light. So demands have never been greater from an electrical perspective in cars today than they have in the history of the automotive industry, and they're only going to get more significant and extreme as time goes on, so it's it's a great idea for folks to take the best care possible that they can with the car battery, regardless of the brand. And, and folks, there you have it. There's the inside story and the inside scoop on not only the automobile that you drive, if it's an older car, but specifically as you get into the newer car and then you have to replace the battery uh, that came from the vehicle, from the factory, always. And, and I've done this. I do this. I practice this here at Carfinic. Uh, install the Optima AGM battery. Jim, Jim McElvain eCare manager for Optima Batteries uh, from Clarius Global. Jim, what a delight to have you on the program. You're just uh, so knowledgeable in batteries, and perhaps one day we'll get you in the Carcon studio so we can field questions live. But in the meantime, thank you so much for joining us today on Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Well, I really appreciate you having me on. Thank you.